Stop connecting your 3D prints with the screws and start using snap hooks. They are a lot cheaper, easier, and more fun to manufacture and assemble. And after we learn the details around how to design the snap hooks in SOLIDWORKS, I will also cover how to create the groove for the hooks on your counterpart. And after that, we'll run a tensile test on different 3D printed snap hooks to grasp an idea of how much force they can actually tolerate depending on their size. You'd be surprised what even a 0.5 millimeter snap hook can tolerate. But we won't stop there. I will reveal a secret about treating the surface of your hook and your groove after 3D printing them because if you use FDM printers, you're gonna face an issue and I'm going to show you how to solve that. This will change the way you build forever. If you're coming from a different CAD platform than SOLIDWORKS, Welcome. Here with SOLIDWORKS, we are able to do almost everything a mechanical engineer needs to create a good design, land good jobs, and etc. A snap tool is only one of many tools it offers for mechanical designs. Let's begin. As promised, we are going to create the first snap hook here and learn how to do this. If I hide one of my components, you see I have the other counter component here, but there are no snap hooks here. And we're gonna add one right around here. Let me just hide this one too. Now, SOLIDWORKS has generously provided us with this snap hook feature, which you don't have it here on default. And to add it here, you can just type S like Sierra on your keyboard and type snap hook. And if you don't have it, you can just drag and drop it over here, but I already have it. so. I'm just gonna click and choose that feature. We need a few inputs for that. The first one is the surface that we want the hook to be placed on, which is this. This is the preview. As long as it's red, it's underdefined, and I cannot click OK. It doesn't accept that. The next reference is the direction. I can reuse the same reference, the same plane. Now the direction is good. Now we need the back. And for that, we need a flat surface. This is not a flat surface. This is not a flat surface either. So I'm just gonna pick one from here. This looks a lot better. And it's not centered, which is um, not cool, but we are not worried about this at this point. We come back and we will edit this later. For example, this distance over here, it's called C, it's 0.25. I can go down to zero and make it like this. If it's too wide, turn this into two, and make it thinner. This is our snap hook, and as you can see, it's not centered, so we're gonna have to go back and edit this. Once you add it to your design tree, you'll see you have created a 3D sketch. So we're gonna edit that sketch, and we see it's just a point. If I drag and drop this point on the midpoint on this edge, we will face an error, trust me. I don't wanna do this. What I do recommend you to do is to um, have one of the planes, because it's a 3D sketch, that cuts your component in half, select it, hold the control key down and select that point and then click on make on plane. Then it would move on that plane. If you want to drag it a little bit down, you can somewhere on here and click OK. Now it's centered, perfectly centered. Now that we have the hook, it's time to create the groove for it because right now it's interfering with a counter component. It's really easy though. It's another feature that SOLIDWORKS provides us with. Again, type S, type indent, okay? And it only works when you have more than one solid bodies. The target body is the counter component. We're gonna select cut and pick this one. If we do this, they would subtract the volume of the hook from the counter component, but we wanna add a few, you know, a little bit of gap over here, make it bigger and click okay. Now, if I hide this component, you see the groove is there and it works perfectly. It's literally as easy as that. Nothing too complicated. Now, however, it doesn't end here. And this is what I have already done for this component and the component below it. Four snap hooks with the indent value of 0 0.1 and they are like this. And this is what you are seeing in my hands right now. It locks perfectly. If I try to pull them apart with my hand, I have to apply a fair amount of force, but on its own, it doesn't even move, it doesn't wiggle, nothing, okay? All right, next I wanted to do something for a round 
component, a half a sphere, because we don't have any flat surfaces. And if you try to apply a snap hook, it would show you the preview, but you will be like, oh, what can I select? I cannot select anything around it. So this is a little bit more tricky, and I wanted to add this as a bonus information because you might be working with something curvy. In this case, all I want to do is to add a custom plane over here. I don't want to get into the willy needies of how I'm going to do that, but I'm going to do that by just, you know, selecting this surface and adding a tangential plane to it. Now, if I go to snap hook, select this one, I can just select this again. And for this one, I can just select the plane and voila, it's done. Oh, sorry, done. Now that we know how to add the snap hook and how to create the groove, let's go and test some of the snap hooks I have already printed and check how much force we need to separate these connections. Okay, I have prepared three different snap hooks connected to this thing here, and they come with different sizes. This is the weakest, this is the one in the middle, and this is the strongest one. So what makes this one the weakest is its contact point, the F value in this figure, which is half a millimeter, 0 0.5, this is 0 0.75, and this is one millimeter. So basically 50%, 75%, and 100%. And I can just snap each one into place, and it hooks. Each of these washers is about 67 grams. So let's, let's see how many we can add to this one before it breaks down. I'm gonna start with five or even maybe 10 because I've done this before on so many different iterations and I doubt it would break before 10. Five more. Five more. I don't know where to add it though. Another five. Now, the mid-range, the 75%. The 100% one. You know, I added almost close to 2.5 kilos, so I'm just gonna skip ahead, and instead of adding so many, Go ahead and connect at 2.5 and see how much we're dealing with. Okay, so starting from 2.5. Like, let's go with like 4, 7, 10. That's a uh, Five. That's another five. All right. Maybe could have kept itself up for another three. One other thing that I understood after doing a lot of these prints is that sometimes when I try to lock these two together, one of the hooks breaks. Obviously, one way would be to make the hooks longer so they have more flexibility so they wouldn't break when you're trying to push them into the counter component. But the other thing that I realized that can solve the problem is this edge over here is very sharp, right? And the surface on top of the hooks I don't know if you can hear this, are very rough. So, this also solves the problem. This is this counter component, and this is something to clean the... Rough edges with, okay. Now, this inner edge is no longer sharp. Similarly on the hooks, this ramp, I use this. Now try to listen. I'm gonna make this closer to the microphone. This is the fixed one. This is the original one. So it's a lot softer. And then after pushing these two together, they lock in place and none of the hooks break. You see, Snaphook is one of the many tools SolidWorks offers. 
for mechanical engineers and mechanical designs. And if this is something you do, you work with sheet metals, you create gates, weldments, even carpentry, SolarWorks is the answer to your solution. And if you want to learn it, I'm going to include my link below this video too. Go ahead and check it out. I'm sure I can help you. If you like this video, I'm sure you're going to love the other video that I have already put for 3D printers, how to print large components on tiny 3D printers. You're going to love that. And if you're new here, thank you very much for subscribing. It would mean a lot to me. And like the video, it would tell YouTube that you like this video. So YouTube knows how to promote this video to other people like yourself who might need this information. Thank you very much.